ladies uh, welcome to my youtube channel we do as i said this channel is about women empowerment and, and before i introduce my next guest which i can't wait to introduce um i'm going to give you just a few tips about women empowerment first know your self-worth as a woman know how to value yourself and support women-run businesses and now i'll introduce you to the queen of virtual boot camp i'm not lying check out her instagram it says so uh nikki charles from justice sweat so nikki tell us about nikki charles uh, my name is Nikki Charles, at an EK Charles. People call me Nikki or Nike. I own Justice Sweat, which is a studio where faith and fitness transforms lives. Uh, I'm a mom of two, uh, a wife for 18 years. Um, I'm an insurance boss lady by day, a trainer by night. Uh, I love fitness. I love God. I love people. And that's who I am. Okay. Wow. Uh, you're definitely wearing a lot of hats. So, mm -hmm. you know, mom, boss, insurance boss, trainer. What brought you? What brought you to this place that you decided to be a trainer? Is it the passion that you always had, or um, you know, insurance and training, can't see the correlation? Good question. I know. Um, I have a degree in kinesiology. I played basketball my whole life. I, I got a scholarship to play basketball in the states. Played in California for four years. I have undergrad in kin. A minor in sports med. Uh, 2015, I was running a charity race, and where I woke up in the hospital with ice bags all over my body butt naked doctor saying it, you know things are shutting down and, and I'm like where am I and they're looking at me like what I remember getting home thinking okay God saved my life what am I doing with myself who am I who am I impacting what am I doing am I making a difference in people's lives what do I love and I thought fitness so I got certified um, as a camp fit pro personal trainer um, opened my studio um, 2016 with my sister and her friends and we've grown from that to 40 women in the basement back-to-back -back classes and then COVID came okay. we went online we've grown and here we are 2021 growing I know so you mentioned COVID and um, did COVID make you did you have to change some things did you have to change or you think were you nervous going into when COVID came no, I'm not nervous. I figured I have to pivot. And for me, pivoting, you have, I played basketball my whole life. You got to pivot to get out of, you got to pivot to move forward. You got to pivot to get out of, you know, defense and whatnot. So you got to pivot. I figured COVID's here. It's locked down. I got to jump online. So I got my girls were with me. We jumped online um, March 15, 2020 with 40 of us. And we grew, we're at 126 right now. Uh, online doing boot camp and loving it where uh, boot camp is incredible because it's a variety of things we do. Um, it's fun. COVID taught me to push keep pushing through do not give up like you have to you have to move and not stay stagnant to see growth so important okay so okay you're clearly doing a lot of things you have just to sweat um just to worship a mom you have a full-time job and you manage a team of, of uh, employees how do you spend like time for how do you get time for you that something suffer do you have to give up something do you have to sacrifice something now I make time. I honestly, for me, I get up early, five five thirty every day in the morning. I get up. I make sure I'm up. I have a closet, a prayer closet, which keeps me focused. It's my plug. It's my source. So you got to think about our phones. Our phones are dying. We want to plug it in so it's charging. But I make it a day, every day, daily deposit, daily renewal of going into my closet in the morning for myself, at least minimum twenty minutes to an hour, hour or more, depending on how how much time I have. I'm up. So spending time and, you know, and doing my devotional, spending time with God, downloading scripture into my thoughts, because I always say toxic thoughts are going to kill you if you don't download scripture to combat those toxic thoughts. It's so important. So I always say, you know, scripture is my, it's my blueprint. It's my life. It's what I live on. And my, and so I don't suffer anywhere else because I put God first. You know, the Bible says, keep God first. And all things will be added. Mm -hmm. That's for me. Keeping God first, nothing else suffers. So I'm good. Like I'm, I am so plugged into my source. I can give from, an, I can give from my well. Cause my well is so full. I'm able to give to my clients and my kids Amen. and my husband. Amen. So that's, that's what <laughs> it is. That's what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a full, it's a full well. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I can tell. But I'm going to ask you a question. So you mentioned clearly you're religious and, you know, thank you for saying that you have to plug into your source, your source is God. How do you find balance in religion, your, your spiritual beliefs and running, you know, being so busy and active? Mm -hmm. uh, does that affect you? When no. You no, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy doing God's work. I would say I'm busy doing something that I'm passionate about. It's my purpose. It's my calling to make sure I love God and love people. John 15, 12, 13 talks about that. Love God. It's a simple command. Love God. Love people. And if you're living in your purpose and you're living in your passion, nothing will fail. Everything works according to its will. Like we're, our lives are puzzle pieces. Think about our lives. God has given us all the pieces, and if they fit together eventually, you may you may try to fit other pieces here. 
and it doesn't fit because it's not time for that piece to go there. So you got to make sure, you know, are things fitting according to God's plan for your life? And God's plans are always good according to his, pur according to his purposes, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a good point, and I'm glad you make that because I noticed and just, you know, interacting with people in general, a lot of people once you know, things are starting to happen to them and things are starting to happen for them. Um, not intentionally sometimes, but God kind of, like their beliefs, whether, you know, whatever God they believe in or whatever their religious beliefs and stuff mm -hmm. takes a, even your, your your personal beliefs that you have for yourself start taking some uh, stands in the back because you're just busy doing all your dreams and all this stuff like that. So I'm happy that you say, you know, you don't compromise on those mm -hmm. things on your, on your spiritual beliefs. So, so that's a good thing. Now I'm going to ask you about boot camp because you're running... You're running a business um, and you have some men, I'm guessing, you know, other genders in, in your camp. I remember going to the gym, you know, it was it's a male dominated field back in the day. And, and as a woman, I always liked the guy to train me, um, you know, because they look excessively <laughs> pleasing. Um, we believe for some reason that men are better. Do you find it's harder for you to sell your business idea to, you know, to try to get a male client or a female client? Is there any kind of... Um, push back to either gender trying to sell personal training for a guy and this girl comes in front of him, you know? Yeah, no, honestly, for me, I always say comparison is the killer of joy. So I know my worth and I know how good I am at what I do. People mm -hmm. people see my work and, okay, you know what, though, she's good at this, so therefore they will come to me for what I do. Mm -hmm. I can't rely on somebody else's talent to make my talent better. I know what I work for, what I've read, what I can do for a person's body, male or female or child. So therefore, they're going to come to me knowing, okay, you know what, though, she, she knows her stuff. So let me see what she can do, right? And then I look, and I also make sure I, I maintain the part of a trainer. Because I know as a trainer, you got to make sure you, a certain way you got to, to be honest, you got to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go, you're not going to go to somebody who doesn't look like the way you want to look. It's, it's being very honest. Yeah. And I get it. Some people look differently and it's totally fine by that. But for me and my preference and what I, what I want to attain is I like the way I look in the mirror. And I like to, and I've worked for this, and I've worked, and I worked, this, I've worked to get to where I am, and it was, it was, it was a journey. It wasn't like a, it wasn't a time lapse event. It was a journey, and I had setbacks. So I know my clients are gonna have the same issues. So therefore, I'm able to help you because I can connect with you that way. Mm -hmm. So I think you said a few good things. Um, it's a journey, and I know for a lot of women, especially, uh, weight loss is a struggle. If I want to mm -hmm. use the word, and it's a journey, and a lot of us. You know, because I'm guilty of it too. We don't stay the course. We don't have the time to stay the course. We want it like this. Um, mm. So were you were you always a bigger girl or did you get heavier at some point in your life and you worked your way into this? So you were just naturally always looking like this. No, not at all. I grew up, I was a little heavier and then went to school, went to California. I, I, I learned how to train like, mm. like an athlete. So I learned that as, a, as an elite, I learned to train hard. So it was good. Came back home. Um, I got married and then I had my daughter. So unreal. And I gained 65 pounds with her. And that shook my world. And being that, in my mind, being that, being that heavy um, and looking in the mirror, not, 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 not like that, what I saw, I didn't like it. So I had to make sure, you know what though? And then I remember being postpartum three, three and a half months and saying, okay, it's, the weight's still on me. Five months, oh my goodness, it's not working. What I know, it wasn't working. So I had to go and read books and do HIIT training and figure out what worked for my body type and how to get back to where I wanted to be as a person. Because I looked in the mirror, I didn't like what I saw. So if you look in the mirror, you don't like what you see, there's a problem. If you like what you see, by all means, and as long as you're healthy internally, I don't care. Health is important. The way you look on the outside, yes, you may be like, okay, I'm a little more 10 pounds heavier, 30, 20, but you, are you healthy inside? Then, then that, by, by all means, live your life. You, some people may not be that fit fitness model or may not be that petite size they want to be but i'm saying you're your own person you're, our thumbprints are all different so i can't compare my thumbprint to your thumbprint it's a thumb yes but i can't compare it to your thumb because it's different my body type is different from your body type so i would say work at it work at it and you're, you're your own competition it's me it's always nike against nike nobody else matters to me i can train for myself by myself with myself for myself you know what and that's the truth because i do want you follow you on instagram the best that i can and some of your videos i can tell you're competing with yourself because when you finish you're like yes and i'm like wow she have it she's like she's her own competition so that's i like that point though and you made another point about not comparing yourself uh to anyone else because mm -hmm. and i find a lot as and i hope you know i'm not wrong by saying that but i'm speaking as a woman myself mm -hmm. that we do sometimes compare ourselves to other women how they look you know you know, especially in terms of physical appearance, we feel like we're working out to why she looks so fit, you know, why she looks so slim, why I'm doing the same thing and I can't achieve that. So I'm glad that you're saying, you know, you got to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. The other thing I like that you said, if you like what you see, then you're okay, but you didn't like what you see. 
Mm. And when you're selling this to a client, do you do you let them know, you know, the candid truth? It's a yeah. journey. Fact, it's a journey. That's where they make it, you know, three months. Yeah, you can drop three ten pounds in three months. You gotta be realistic. I always say you you gotta set realistic goals. They gotta be smart goals. Mm -hmm. If the goals are not, they gotta be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time sensitive. People say to me, you know, I want to lose fifteen. I want to use fifty pounds, but I'm like, okay, forget about the pounds. How about you set goals that you can attain? I want to go to the gym three days a week, and that's attainable because you know what? I can go three days a week. I'm not, I know I won't lose fifty pounds. I can't say okay, is it certain I'm gonna lose fifty pounds? I can't guarantee you that. But I can guarantee you can go to go three days a week because you can see me online three days a week or we can do one-on-one -on -one three days a week because we're setting goals that are realistic and they're time set and they're realistic. They're attainable. So you got to make sure they're attainable goals and not these nonsense goals that are like, oh, you can drink, drink some tea and you'll be slamming in the morning. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> that's not how it works. You know, no, you got to put in work. You got to put in work to see results. You got to put in that work. I like that. You got to set smart goals. Um, I like smart, you know, not just any goals, realistic goals that's attainable. And yes, you know, not, you can't just automatically lose 50 pounds. You got to set goals at first. There's a process. I need to work out three days a week. I need to log on to Nikki's. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Three days a week. I need to go to the right. What are you eating? There's so, much, so many things that, that go along with that, that whole program of you losing weight. It's not just, it's not just the one thing. Okay. I'm going to work out and lose the weight. You know, is your mind right? Is, are you mentally, are you mentally stable to get through this course of the next six to eight months, a year, however long journey is for you? Are you mentally, physically, and emotionally ready for that roller coaster? Because it's a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Losing weight is, we're women, losing weight is a roller coaster. We constantly look in the mirror and think, okay, I'm, I need to lose 10 pounds here. It doesn't matter how slim you look. I, it doesn't matter. I'll be honest with you. I can look in the mirror and I'm like, oh my goodness, I have love handles here. And Irfa, there's nothing there. But in my mind, I see these love handles mm -hmm. and there's nothing there. But I'm like, okay, but we're women and we always, we, we're the biggest judgmental people for our own selves. So mm -hmm. you got to be, you got to, you got to be able to give yourself some, some grace. And, and go through the journey. And you know what? I, I Listen, that's a really good point because you said as a woman too, and you know, we think that the other gender judges us, but we really do judge ourselves. Oh. And I really like the fact that you say we have to give ourselves some grace. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, I mean, God gave us grace for the love, you know, so he we does. To give ourselves some grace and, and, and the process and the journey and being committed to it, I think mm -hmm. is important too. Um, so tell us, I know you used to run like boot camp classes at your work, you know, at lunch times. How do you, how did you come up with that? Hey guys, I'm going to go work out, join me. It was my thing. Honestly, for me, it's about downloading and downloading great ideas, downloading creativity, downloading things I want to do as a person. I'm very, I'm, I'm very ambitious. I've been a hustler. I grew up, where I grew up, my, we, we grew up, either girls like me get pregnant at 15, end up in jail, you know, or die or, you know, prostitution or something different. That's what they set, set up for us to be, you know, in, you know, in where I'm from. So I, I have to beat the odds and, okay, you know, I'm better. We can do anything. We're female. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're female. <laughs> we can do anything we want to. Like, we are the creme, we are the cream of the crop hands down so whatever we set our mind to we can do it so whatever i want to do i have a daughter as well she knows you know her name's naima whatever you feel like doing the vice president of the united states is a, is a female get mm -hmm. going please everybody okay mm -hmm. excuse me what are so, we going through I, I you know what and you mentioned where you grew up so just give mm -hmm. us for the girls because this is about local women and i want mm -hmm. women to know it's not just women you know you watch on tv on youtube in hollywood or random women mm -hmm. we never see you you're a woman that's right here like in, in mm -hmm. our area you know so where did you grow up do you mind wow sharing? I grew up in two hoods. I grew up in Jungle, which is Lawrence Heights neighborhood, and I grew up, I'm a Finch girl too, so I have the best of both worlds. Like, I have the, both hoods in me, so I can be righteous and ratchet at the same time. Like, I love God. It's all good. <laughs> so I get it. I righteous and ratchet. But you didn't just stay ratchet, you know? Right. That you could, and that's what I want people to get. It doesn't matter where you grow up. You doesn't matter. Women, there's something you can get. You can achieve mm. something else. And you mentioned, yes, the girls your age at 15 probably had all the kids you know two already and, but you what so what kept you then was it your family goals or what kept you honestly I had, I had good, I had a good teacher i had good parents i had, I had people who still you know positive positive thoughts affirmations into my mind saying you know what you were this, you were that. So yes, I went off the wrong path. Yes, I, yes, I had trauma. Don't get me wrong. I have had trauma. But I would say, you know, turning your trauma into your testimony is massive for me. Mm. So your trauma, can, things happen. Life happens. We go through this. It's life. Life happens to us. But what do you do with what happens to you? What have you done with it? Like, what is your legacy? Like, I'm, I'm raising a daughter. You know, she must look back and be like, oh, my mom did X, Y, Z. I got a tattoo at 17. 
And I hate it. I hate it now. I'm 43. I thought and you were just being cool, you know? No, I was at 17, yes. But my dad looks at me, Mom, you have a tattoo? Like, and I'm telling her the story. And I'm like, I'm good. I'm glad I told you the story. Because you know what? Don't look at me like I'm perfect now. Or I'm, what, I'm not without flaws. Because I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm so, I need, I'm, I'm dysfunctional at its finest. Hence, I have a closet. But I always say to people, you know what, though? This tattoo reminds me of my, my, my journey and what I've been through. And you know what? And that's my stamp of, you know what, though? You got through that, kid. In, mm -hmm. by the grace of God but I mean it's good to tell our kids because our parents being African American our parents didn't tell us what they went through they could say look at me now here I am now da -da 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 -da. no no but what did you go through to get to get to now because it was a journey you had dark seasons mm -hmm. right but at the end of it though it's always good at the end of it but you gotta you gotta tell our generation about you know our seasons what we've gone through so they can realize that we're not telling we're not it's not fiction it's facts mm -hmm. like we've been through stuff but look at us now we're, we're growing and thriving in our in ourselves mm -hmm. so it's doing it's doing that so you know what i like it for and and uh, you know for women like us and in this case specifically mm -hmm. and it's funny because it's you know we're just finishing up black history month so um it's visible we're black women um but i like the fact that you're saying you got to share, you know, you just, your, your story just can't stop there. You know, I yeah. got to the end. Mm -hmm. Listen, I've, I've been there, done this, but it's a journey. And I'm glad yeah. that we can share with women. You could have done a lot of things at 17, but at 35, 40, it's okay. It's not too late. You could, you got a lot of life in you still, right? Yeah. Right. Yep. Like that too. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that. It's okay to have the trauma. Don't bring, you know, you can stop it at some time, get help if you need to. Yeah. The resources. And also I'm just going to put a plug here. We're going to, Spit up some resources for mental health and all the stuff like that, things to distress you. Awesome. Um, I know you sell supplements and all the stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So in a few minutes, you can tell us about that. But um, most important is don't stop there. Don't stop in right. the trauma or the drama and all the stuff like that. Gravitate towards something else. And I like the fact, too, you also talked about your parents and you had a circle, like a good teacher and all mm -hmm. the stuff mentoring you. And women, I just want to put it out there. You really do need a village sometimes. You yeah. Yeah. Tap into whatever resources that you need. Reach out to us here. You know, Nikki right. always is open. She's a good, good spirit. Send an Instagram. Send me one. Send me an email. It's up. We do 7806 at gmail.com or just go on my Facebook um, and just get a circle of women or people that, you know, whether you, you may have to include some men to maybe your teacher is a male, you know, but just a group of people that can really empower you, not keep you down in that barrel, you know, right. perhaps in a barrel, but help you to get to where you want to go. So, Nikki, now I'm going to ask you, if you had to throw some advice out there for women and or anyone who's looking at this and saying, you know what? Yeah, man, I want to start this business. I want to do a personal training business. I want to get into, you know, I'm 40. I want to get into this dramatic life. I want to make some changes. What would you tell them? Make sure it's your purpose and that you love what you do. Like, don't just do, people open up businesses and open up things they want to do and they don't love it. It's not their passion. If it's not your calling, it's going to fail. I promise you that. Make sure it's your calling, something you love and if you're passionate about it. If you do it for free, is what I always say to myself, that's your passion. Like I would train for free, for free, don't care because it's, it's my passion and I want to give back in that way. So I always say, you know, make sure it's your passion, your love, something you like to do and make sure you set goals that you can crush every day and be proud of yourself. For me, one thing I always say to myself, I'm like, I go in the mirror every day and say, I love you. I'm proud of you, kid. It's my, it's my mantra from every morning in the morning. I wake up, look in the mirror. Before I brush my teeth, I'd be like, I love you and I'm proud of you, kid. Like, simple. So make sure you do that for yourself because you're, you're your biggest, biggest cheerleader. Like, if you're not cheering yourself on, who else would? Mm -hmm. Like, really? And you know what? I think it really does show. And, uh, you know, and it's nice to hear you say that because you watch, you know, we've seen all those motivational speakers, we've seen YouTube, you know, whatever. And they all say mm -hmm. things like, yeah, you know, I tell myself this thing, you know, you're beautiful and it's worth it. But to hear somebody that's real in front of me, you know, that mm -hmm. you may run into at the grocery store saying, listen, guys, I do it too. It works. Like I get up in the morning and I affirm myself. Mm -hmm. So thank you for, for letting us know that. Um, so I'm going to just pull it two points. What I really like, you said goals, and I like smart goals. Set yourself realistic goals, lady, ladies. Um, well, something that you kind of mentioned, too, is um, trust yourself to make good decisions, sort of. Mm. Okay? And I'm going to also add in, get rid of the toxic people. Yeah. Surround yourself with people that can help you, whether it's professionally, whether it's friends. And listen, at 40 and 50 and th late 30s, you got to drop some friends, too. You do. Toxic, you know, yeah. Yeah, you've been, they've been riding with you all your life and there's no progress. They got to go, guys. So mm -hmm. just letting you know, 
Um, Nikki, honestly, I met you, I think, since in our 20s, and you, oh want, you, are, you are a good soul. You look Thank exactly you. the same. <laughs> You know, Thank you. So this is really, uh, I'm, I'm testifying through the process that surround yourself with good people. Let the toxic one go. Anything else you want to throw in? Tell us about your business. Tell us where we can find you, Nikki. Mm, just a sweat. Um, either Adani K. Charles is my is my full name. Adani K. Charles. A D E N I K E. Charles. C H A R L E S dot com, which is my website. And then under my website is Umbrella Just a Sweat, which is one of my brands. Um, just a sweat. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Just a Sweat, like my shirt says. Um, find us there. We do boot camps every six weeks, so we have one starting tomorrow, which is March first. Um, and yeah, to, ooh, yeah, so we could do that. And then um, we just honestly six weeks, and then we do. We get it done. We have so much. It's variety. Of, it's a variety. It's never the same. It's um, the music is hype. Um, I'm nuts, but it's good nuts, and I will motivate you, challenge, inspire you, and make you get stronger, better, leaner. And come on out. It's so fun. Not because I own it. It's actually, honestly, I get hype off my own classes, and it's kind of, it's kind. I have to get, I get out of my skin, and I'm like, whoa, relax, come back. You're teaching a class, so yeah, that's what I do. But come on out. Just a sweat. Okay, guys, and I've taken a few of those classes. It's really good, too. I, honestly, I'll be honest, though, I'm not a kind of aerobic kind of girl, so I was kind of nervous at first joining, but it, the variety is so good and intensity. I'm like, wow, I should have done this a long time. This is really good because you're not just in aerobic mode. You're not just in a cardio. You do some weights. You, you're creative. You're throwing in things. So you never have a time to be, oh, this is boring. Oh, I'm so tired. Before you get a second to be tired, there's like something real exciting coming, you know? So, and, uh, you know, so really, guys, honestly, sign up for the boot camp. You'll see the results and it's fun. There's men, your husbands, your biggest supporter, always mm -hmm. there. Keep it us going. <laughs> Laugh is the Making you laugh. <laughs> but he, he's there. So thank you. Thank you. Nikki, I honestly want to thank you. I want to thank you for just being a great person overall. Thank, thank you. you for your story and your journey. Guys, if you want to see the entire thing, you can check us Nikki's uh, uh, Instagram, Just the Sweat. Go on the website, Adeniki Charles. Uh, tell us the rest there. AdenikiCharles.com. AdenikiCharles.com. It really wasn't that hard. Nope. Um, Fuck it. <laughs> check me out on Facebook, We Do Empowerment. Go on my Instagram, like, put a comment, um, subscribe. There's a lot of exciting things happening. There's a lot of girls just like us in our neighborhood, as I said, that you're going to see. Um, Reach out if you have questions. Reach out to me. It's we do seven eight zero six at gmail.com. Send Nikki, Nikki, Nikki got a lot of resources too. I'm sure I'm putting you out there, Nikki, but I'm sure she'll take your questions. You know, I will. if you need some tips or anything like that. I think one thing you told me off camera, you have no problem sharing. You like to share your journey, you know, sharing how you can help someone, sharing your journey. They can just ask. So I'm putting right. you on the spot now. So, all good. Thank you guys. And uh, check, check in Wednesday with us. We'll have some great tips for you for finances. It's uh, tax season. So um, check us out Wednesday also. So hashtag we do women empowerment define the odds. Thank you, Nikki. Awesome. Thank you, Eva.